Hi everybody, this is Thero. Uh, you can find me on the Marvel Champions Discord answering rules questions or uh, doing the Cartex podcast with Bob and Scott or sometimes here on YouTube doing some videos. Um, I've got a playthrough series that I've just finished up playing through every scenario and every hero, not every combination, but at least every hero once and every scenario once, so you can go check those out. Uh, it's 41 uh, videos and um, I'll be doing some extensions to that with, you know, regular custom deck building against scenarios of some sort starting next week. Uh, I, but over on this side of the channel, I've been doing some what if videos. I've done a series on the first four hero packs and some alternative precons for those. Uh, you can go check one of those out. But um, I'm continuing that here with. Uh, Doctor Strange and Hulk. So after those first four hero packs, then we got Doctor Strange and Hulk, and they are the two most extreme uh, heroes released from Marvel Champions. Doctor Strange being the most powerful hero still as of yet, um, although you know, he's had some push up into his S tier. <laughs> it's not just him alone anymore, uh, but still he's generally the top of that tier by considered by most people. Um, and we've got Hulk, who is down at the bottom in his own tier. He's had a couple people, a couple heroes kind of push down towards him a little bit, but he's pretty much bottom tier uh, all on his own. So um, so we're going to do those two heroes, and as I wanted to continue with the alternative Freakon idea for them, but in addition to the alternative Freakon, I wanted to push into... Um, kind of some tweaks for those heroes to maybe bring them a little bit more in line. So that's what we're doing today. We've got Doctor Strange and we're going to look at his alternative precon. So I'm not going to go through the whole spiel about precons, but this is his this is a version of his alternative precon. So um if you were watching for uh the first four Miss Marvel's deck came up and I had to push momentum shift back to her deck cuz I think it fit well in her deck better than it does in Doctor Strange. Um, and I also pushed Iron Fist back to her deck to give her a little bit more allies. So here in Doctor Strange, we've lost both of those cards. So I pulled in Electrostatic Armor from Hulk, as would be normal. I needed a protection card from the first set, so I went ahead and put Second Wind here, uh, which is, you know, not great. But hey, there it is. And I pulled Resourceful over from Hulk, because Doctor Strange doesn't have a basic in the back of his deck. Um, now, downtime is available, and I could have put that in Doctor Strange, but I would rather put it in Hulk, I think, even though, you know, Hulk is Hulk. But still, plus two recovery is good for him, given his immense hit points. Uh, and maybe it opens us up to do something more interesting with Banner's Laboratory. So that's basically it. Um, other than that, we've just got two copies of his three copy cards, and one copy goes to the back of the pack. There's six cards here. Those six cards would go to the back of his pack. He also has his five-card invocation deck, which means that he would, if this hero pack were released this way, only have one card in the back of his pack, which I guess goes to Iron Man. Um, that means that we have an extra aggression card, an extra justice card, and hey, look at that. Spider-Woman's over there in the box, and she's going to need a card or two. So um, I think that works out. But anyways... That's kind of the idea here. I haven't worked out all the details of of how these packs work, but that's kind of the idea. Um, this deck has a lot of healing, which is totally unnecessary for Strange, but well, maybe it's not. We'll see. All right. Um, so let's talk a little bit about Doctor Strange. So that's the pre-con. Now, for Doctor Strange himself... Um, why is Doctor Strange overpowered? Well, because he has this extra card that is like an extra card in his hand. Now, his invocations are relatively good, being something like Crimson Bands of Sidorak, two-cost event, stuns an enemy, deals seven damage. If this was a card in your hand, and you had to exhaust Doctor Strange to play it, um, I think that wouldn't be an entirely unfair card. So one of the questions with Doctor Strange is what's the value of an exhaust? Exhaust Doctor Strange um, and pay two resources 
well, the value of exhaust is around two resources, give or take. Uh, many heroes can ready with a one resource card, and even Doctor Strange, his um, Master of the Mystic Arts card is pretty much that, right? It's a one cost event that you play from your hand to play an invocation instead of exhausting. So he can trade two resources for an exhaust, in a manner of speaking. So that means Crimson Bands of Sidorak, you can look at this as a four cost event. Four cost event that does seven damage and stuns. Well, that seems to be a little bit, I mean, it's a, it's a little underpowered actually. It's given, you know, Captain America has heroic strike, six damage and a stun for three. Um, you have to pay for it with a fist, so you're paying an extra resource here. Doesn't have any type necessary. Deals an extra damage. It's it's fine. I mean, it's not like it's not bad. It's not amazing. It's it's it seems fine. A um, little expensive, and then at four cost. But at an exhaust, uh, and then an exhaust, and and only costing two, and being played outside of your hand. That's when it starts to become well. This is actually pretty good. It's not his best invocation, but it's a pretty good one. Um, Vapors of Altor, uh does something totally different from anything else, and uh, that's fine. Seven Rings of Ragador gives up to three characters a tough status. Right for one, two, three. Well, that's that's in line with like a protection card. So um, the Avengers only protection card. So you know, for a hero card, sure, that seems kind of okay. Uh, draw three cards. Now this costs zero. Uh, you'll note already that. I have it costing one here, but this typically costs zero. Draw three cards. Um, so pay two to draw three. Well, that's that's good, but it's kind of like just an extra double resource. Plenty of heroes have that kind of thing. Um, it's not, you know, if you've had to pay two to draw three on a hero card, that would not be so, so ridiculous. Um, and then we have Images of Icon. Again, three cost, four threat, and a confuse. Well, that's that's right in line. Black Widow has that card. So, um, so what I'm saying is, if these cards were in your hand and they cost two extra resources and didn't exhaust Doctor Strange, that would be pretty much fair. So, the issue with Doctor Strange, the reason he's so overpowered, is firstly whether an exhaust actually is worth two resources is a little bit, eh. I don't. I'm not 100% on the math on that. Um, yeah, sure, Indomitable, that's a two resource. Ready, ready effects cost two. Is an exhaust worth two resources? Yeah, you know, I mean, Doctor Strange's exhausts aren't the best in the world, so I think that's part of why these get a, are a little overpowered. Um, the other half of that is that, of course, they're cards not in your hand, and every time you play one, you get another one for free. That's where it starts to get a little excessive because um, now suddenly you don't have to pay for these cards and they're like free cards in your hand so it's really like Doctor Strange has not just a six card hand size if you play two invocations in, in a single turn you had a seven card hand size if you play three you had an eight card hand size and so you see where it gets really ridiculous because you can just play invocation after invocation and if you can play a bunch of them in the same turn, it's like you added all of them to your hand size, every one of them. Um, that includes the one that you play with Master of the Mystic Arts. And that's where he can become ridiculous, is you have a free draw three, you play it th three times, and suddenly your hand is huge uh, because you turned those virtual cards into real cards. And then you can still do another invocation. <laughs> <laughs> which is another card. It's like you drew four extra cards in that turn. Um, and that's a lot. It's a lot of cards. So, so the first thing we're doing here, um, which I hinted at earlier, if you have, if you saw this, this is the back, new back of his invocation deck. Um, so the idea here is that instead of his invocations being face up, they start the game face down. And in order to turn it face up, you have to discard a card from your hand. Now this basically takes care of the fact that those cards are free. Um, you can, however, hold them from turn to turn, which is good. This, you know, that's cool. Extra little bit of value there, but not immense value. Um, if you discard a card to flip one of them over, and then you use it on your next turn, 
you're only using one invocation per turn, that brings a lot of playability into Doctor Strange's world that he doesn't currently have. If you play three of them in one turn, you discarded three cards from your hand, you just lost all of your card advantage out of that. So, so that's the first half of this, is just Ming's invocations cost cards so that they don't give ridiculous card advantage. The second half, uh, you may have noticed that I added a resource icon to all of these. So the idea that I have here is that you can't just play an invocation, just play it. You have to match the resources. So exhaust Doctor Strange and pay resources matching the icon of the top face-up card of the invocation deck equal to its cost. I don't know how to word that properly. Uh, I've gone through a few variations of it. It doesn't fit nicely, but the idea is you pay resources matching the icon equal to its cost. Uh, so you pay two fists to play that, and you pay nothing for Vapors of Altor. You pay one wild for seven rings of Ragador. You pay one energy for Winds of Watum, and you pay one mental for images of icon. Now this gives him a nice you know, spread of resources that he wants, which makes deck building for him potentially a little bit more interesting. Um, you would rather have fists so you can play this, but you need everything if you're going to play any of them. Rings of Ragador is generally after... these Rings of Ragador and Winds of Watum are generally his two most powerful card. So we've made Winds of Watum cost one uh, instead of being free, and it has to be an energy resource, which is you know, generally speaking, not that hard of a thing to do. Did I, do I have any fists? I don't have any fists in this deck. That's going to be rough. Uh, I guess a couple. Um, Seven Rings Ragador, which is the other most powerful card, still only costs one, but it has to be a wild, which makes it a little bit harder to play. Now, Doctor Strange, of course, does have access to wilds, right? Um, because he has the Eye of Agamotto, which gives him a free wild resource. And this is part of why I wanted this resource match to be here. He can generate a wild resource every turn. That's really cool if he has to do resource matching. So let's make him do resource matching. Now that he has to do resource matching, generating wild rakes sense, Eye of Agamotto is like a key card to his ability to cast his spells whenever he wants to. Um, and it's once per turn, which means it's going to be hard to cast multiple invocations in a single turn. But it's not impossible. Right, one of one common way to nerf Doctor Strange is to just make him only cast one invocation per turn. Let him be as powerful as they are. Um, the idea here is that okay, it's a little more expensive to cast them because in order to be able to cast them first, you have to discard a card from your hand so that you can get it face up. The second part of that is that um, you have to pay the exact resources. Now that means that you don't generally want to depend on getting your invocation. Or when you do, you have to make choices. Those choices can be tricky. Oh, do I, which card do I discard? Well, am I going to be able to resource match whatever I flip over? Um, if you have a wild, sure. That means he wants to build with wilds. Oh, suddenly you're building decks with wilds, which is a really interesting deck type that nobody really uses it currently. Um, and I am going to make a change. I am going to swap him out for Mockingbird. Yeah. I was going to use him originally, but I like Mockingbird better here in particular because she's a fist resource. And he needs just a good spread of resources. Okay, so sorry for that last minute change here to the starter deck, the pre-con. Um, finally, one last thing. Stephen Strange, of course, changes because he used to just be able to discard an invocation. Now you can flip over the top card of the invocation deck. <laughs> Oh, look at that typo. Flip over the top card of the Invocation deck in Invocation deck. You may discard it. Um, so you, you flip it over. You flip over the top card. You say, oh, I can't play that one. And you can discard it. So that you could then discard a card to flip over the next one. If you wanted to. Um, this is just an action. So you can do it any time. Just like you can use this spell any time. So, uh, yep. That's our Doctor Strange. We're going to give this a try right here and see how it goes. All right, invocation shuffled, deck shuffled. We are going to fight against Ebony Maw. Um, they recently ruled that you have to do this first and then him, which I think is dumb. All right, uh, we're fighting Ebony Maw. We're not just fighting Ebony Maw. Fighting Ebony Maw with
with uh, galactic artifacts and as his second modular because he gets two modulars I gave him Hydra Patrol so one relatively powerful one one kind of weak one we'll see how that does alright we've got three on pacification which is going to exhaust every upgrade I control not very nice if I get built up and four on fireball all right, so we'll see how this strange does. Starting with four. I think there must be a... Somebody must have done something funny. All right, six card hand. Here we got the Sanctum Sanctorum. That's kind of cool. Um, Desperate Defense is garbage. Astral Projection is unnecessary. Master of the Mystic Arts is useful. Oh, one thing to note, Master of the Mystic Arts, pay the printed cost of the top card, it does not require a resource match. So Strange requires it, Master of the Mystic Arts does not. Gives a little bit more vari variation between the two of them. Um, I've gone back and forth on Master of the Mystic Arts in terms of having it discard a card. Uh, whether it should discard the invocation or just use it and leave it there. For now, we're going to use it and leave it there. I think that's fair. Um, again differentiates the card a little bit because you don't have to pay for it. Um, one other thing that having this card a card to flip over the invocation as opposed to having them all cost one more it means that when you use Wong to bypass an invocation it also costs you a card. Even Cosmo uh, potentially costs you a card although you could f just discard the top card of the invocation before you flip it over if you know what it is. Um, I don't know. It makes Cosmo less OP in combination with Doctor Strange. Still wouldn't use him, but hey, it's there. All right, so that's a no, that's a no, and that's also, I think, a no. We're just gonna go with none of those. We'll hang on to these three. Let's see if I can get, you know, a double resource or something. Hmm, interesting. Okay, so we're going to start this game. First, we'll use Natural Talent to flip over the top card. It's Images of Icon, which we can use to confuse Ebony Maw, which is nice. So I don't, I can't use both my Master of the Mystic Art. So we're just going to use one to play Sanctum Sanctorum. We're going to go ahead and shuffle an Astral Projection back in because I have a feeling that Threat's maybe going to turn into an issue. Nah. Uh, y nah. I, nah. I don't know. Can't make up my mind. Yeah, we're going to grab Astral Projection because we're not going to keep this image of Icon forever. And then we draw a card. Hey, it's a double resource. All right, we're going to flip to hero form. Actually, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to play Images of Icon. That removes this threat and confuses Ebony Maw because I don't really need that on top of my deck. And then we're going to discard a card to flip over the top card here. And it's Crimson Bands of Citrax. So we're going to go ahead and use that. So pay one for this and a double to use Crimson Bands of Citrax. Deal seven damage and stun Ebony Maw. There we go. Let's let those spells build up forever. Alrighty. Five card hand. Hmm. That's fine, because I can go Alter Ego. That's probably what I'm going to do. Alright, one threat. Ebony Maw is stunned, so he does not attack me. I get a single encounter card. It's a Hydra Soldier. Alrighty. So, I think I do want Wong. Um... I don't think I'm going to deal with that Hydra Soldier this turn, but we can defeat him next turn. When a treachery is... So Protective Ward only works against treacheries. He's not a treachery, so that does not work. Um, actually, you know what I can do? I can play Magical Enhancements on myself. 
then I can punch this Hydra Soldier for two. And I can go Alter Ego. Then I'm going to use Sanctum Sanctorum. We're going to shuffle that Protective Ward back into my deck. And draw one card. Aw, oh, man. Two. Three for Wong. Wong. We'll deal two damage to defeat him. And I get an encounter card. I technically still have magical enhancements. Alright. Six card hand. There we go. Now we're talking. I don't need to use mystical senses because I got the two cards I needed. Alright. One threat. Ebony Maw is confused, so he does not activate. We get two cards. The first is a Vendarian Power Wand, which is going to take three energies to discard. Um, yeah. Great. And the second one is a Hydra Regular, who incites for one. And then this card goes away. So, as an action, I could discard this. Now, I need to figure out if that's a thing I want to do. One, two, Cloak of Levitation. Two, I have Agamotto. No, I think I can use it. Oh, I get an extra card. Um, get that protective ward back again. So I can cancel the treachery if I get one. Alright, we're not going to use his power. Oh, sorry, draw a card. Oh, Night Nurse. That's interesting. Um, we're good to thwart, so that's cool. Alright, we're going to spend two to play Eye of Agamotto. And we're going to spend... Two for Cloak of Levitation. I think we're going to hang on to Night Nurse. We're going to hang on to Night Nurse. Alrighty. One, two, seven damage. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And a stun status. Alright, we can't quite clear off this Vendarian power wand, unfortunately. <laughs> really wish they'd come in the opposite order. Then he would have it. Wong can deal two damage to this Hydra regular. Ready. Move two threat. Oh, and we discard the Night Nurse to reveal our next invocation. Now we'll be able to seven rings regular. One, two, three, can clear that, but that means I have no wild to seven rings. Ah well. One threat. Ebony Ma is stunned. I've not yet let him activate this game. <laughs> and that is the power of Doctor Strange. Oh no, he attacks me. For two plus a boost. Actually, I could cancel that. I think I'm going to go ahead and let him attack me, honestly. It's fine. I can take a hit. Ooh, ouch. Five. Maybe I was wrong. And it's a Hydra Soldier. One, two, three. I think I do need to kill this right there. But I cannot use seven rings. So it's kind of just a figure out what I can do here. Um, shoot. You know what? I really should have just canceled that because this is doing me no good. I mean, I really can't do anything else because I have to spend that. Uh, I also get to have a top card of the encounter deck. It's a shadow of the past. We 
because I can't play it because I don't have wild. And you can see where this is a bit of a nerf. I'm going to use Wong to heal me too. I'm going to punch this guy for two, but not defeat him quite yet. And I'm going to go Alter Ego. I know he's going to scheme for four, five, six. Oh, maybe I won't go Alter Ego. Shoot. I don't want him to go to stage two. We're just not going to let that happen. All right. Five guard hand again. Darn. No defenses, huh? That's a shame because I know he's going to hit me for four if I had an, uh, the, um, not impossible. If I had, what's the color called? Desperate Defense. I haven't even seen a Desperate Defense. Oh, there it is. If I had my other Desperate Defense, that would be nice. But I don't. So I'm just going to have to deal with it. Uh, I might just go ahead and sack Wong. Oh, his healing is useful. And I could play a Med Team or something and heal him. I'm going to take six damage. That's a lot. Also, those are awfully close to going off. And I need to not die. Sorry, Wong. You take four. And then this Hydra Soldier attacks me. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and defend that also. I don't think it'll hurt me that bad to be exhausted. Attach the enemy with the highest scheme. Great. Two threat on the main scheme, spend two resources of the same type to discard that. Oh, that's why I didn't want to play Wong. Well, let's see. If I spend three to play Brother Voodoo, and seven rings, the two of us, and that is pretty good. I can seven rings him. Uh, this should have one threat. After he exhausts. Um, try and say what I want to do with this. Sure. We'll go that direction. Top five guards. Take an event. Well, that's my only event. my hand. Ready Doctor Strange. Uh, Brother Voodoo is going to go ahead and just punch the Cider Soldier one time. Use that to give everybody a tough status. And we're going to play Unflappable. Hey, look, it's a desperate defense. One threat. Ebony Maw attacks me. All right. So that's annoying. Exhaust each upgrade I control, and I am stunned. That's a support. So that's fine. I take this, and I'm tough, so it won't affect me too badly. Alternatively, no. Four damage. I'm no longer tough. Hydra Soldier punches me for two. That's fine. I get a single encounter card. It's channeling trance. Remove one invocation counter from each spell. Wait, how did that go off? And this is not at one. From each spell in my play area. So this loses its encounter. I take four damage. Um, I choose to not use this card the way it actually works, which is that after it activates, if you have no spell environments in your play area at that time, 
You have to discard cards from the top of the encounter deck until a spell is put into is discarded. I choose not to do it on the last spell because I think it's a dumb interaction. I apologize if you don't think that's a dumb interaction, but it bothers me. I don't like it, so I don't use it. Um. Well, that was really annoying. I need to go alter ego and recover. I have nothing I can do. <laughs> so annoying. Alright. Brother Voodoo is going to spend his tough status to remove two threat. I'm going to go alter ego and recover. Um, that's not going to help me next turn, which is the only time I'm going to get this. So we'll pull a magic blast in, I guess. Nah. Do another astral projection. Oh, I totally should have. Well, no, but I can make that. I flip this face up. Oh, it's Winds of Watum. Cool. Uh oh, I switched draw card. It's another warning. Look at that. I got all cards I cannot use. Every card is a card I cannot use. Oh, I totally sh should have done that. Uh, shoot. I don't know. I don't really want two threat on the main scheme. That's fine. I'm just discarding this hand. The whole stinking hand, except for that double resource, because that double resource will let me play Mockingbird, which would have been a nice draw. Extra encounter card. Extra encounter card. All right. One threat. He schemes for one, two, three, four, five, which completes that. When revealed, shuffle the encounter discard pile into the encounter deck and discard until we get a spell. And that's going to have two threat. Let's get a spell. It's another pacification. Lovely. Plus, I don't have to reveal it. Oh, I have to reveal this fireball, though. Uh, fireball. And surge. Each player must choose to either take two damage or place two threat here. Oh, my gosh, you ready? I can take two damage or I can place two threat. I think we're going to go with the threat. I can probably handle that easier than the damage. Um, actually, I could handle the damage too. I can heal five with second wind. I have a really odd things I can do this turn. I'm going to use Sanctum Sanctorum. Shuffle a spell from an compile with Shahami. Just draw a card. That's cool. I don't have an energy resource. That's funny. I'm going to recover three. And then flip. And then click the levitation to ready. And then spend this to Winds of Watum to draw three cards. Alrighty. We've got a very full hand now. Um, I'm going to discard this card to flip that over. Oh, I guess I can't play it, though. Dorn. I'll have to wait. Two resources for Clea is pretty good. Happy with that. Um, two resources for Astral Projection, which removes three threat and looks at the top card. One Four threat. Okay, so Clea can knock the last threat off of that. It's defeated, which is handy. Uh, darn, I am a resource short. Okay, so hold on. I'm going to rewind just a bit. I 
I know that's Vapors of Altor, and Vapors of Altor would be useful to me. But as it turns out, I'm a resource short. <laughs> I'm doing what I want to do, so we're not going to do that. This is better. For two, we're playing Sorcerer Supreme. And for three, we are playing Mockingbird. And that is going to stun Ebony Maw. And then Mockingbird is going to punch this Hider Soldier. And I get an encounter card out of that. And Brother Voodoo. You know what? We're just going to spend him. To knock off both threat. I got a six card hand in hero form now. Yay! Alright, one threat. I'm going to even stunned. He does not attack me. I get two encounter cards. I cannot cancel things. I got a magical teapot. Five threat. And I can heal four when I do it. Hero, take one damage for each spell environment. Thanks. Um, actually, when a hero would take any amount of damage, reduce it by one. I'm going to go ahead and do that, because I would rather not be at quite so low hit point value. Alrighty. We are going to discard a card to flip over this invocation. And we are going to exhaust to turn my stunned into a tough. Which is just a handy thing to be able to do. And that uses up the last of my invocation stack. Alright, we're going to discard a card to reveal the top card. Oh, it's Winds of Watum. Alright, well, we're going to ready then. And we're going to spend it to draw three. Because that is worth. Yes. So. This is where not knowing what this card is is really a big deal. Because, see, I could discard a card to flip this over, and if I, if I already knew if this thwarted, if this thwarted, I could do it. Knock five thread off that, four thread off that scheme, knock the fifth one off with Mockingbird, and be all set. But I don't know that. That's going to heal me for four. I really shouldn't have discarded warding. I don't know what I was thinking. Um, I forgot I was going to heal four when I thwarted that. Is what I, what happened. The problem is if I spend two on astral projection, I cannot play Wong. So we're looking at playing something like electrostatic armor. What that means is that it's probably worth it for me to discard a card to reveal this card and see what it is. Okay, it was Vapors of Valtor not the card I wanted to see at this moment. But that's okay. So we're going to spend two to do an astral projection. Remove three threat. And two more. Thank you. Spell that kills this. Which is, I guess, the victory pile. And I heal four. And then I'm going to go ahead and spend two resources. Oh, shoot. They had to be the same time. Uh, where's Wong? I kept Wong instead of Medicine Mystic. But I had my choice. All right. I'm going to spend two of the same resource. Kill this thing. And Mockingbird's going to thwart it for one. And Cleo's going to stick around to block for me. And. I think I'm happy. I have six card hand. Ooh, protective ward. One threat. Ebony Maw attacks me. These each go down by one. Clea is going to block his attack. And take four damage. 
and shuffle back into my deck, and I get a single encounter card, and it's another attack. But instead of being attacked here, I'm going to pay for a protective ward with Nightmares. Alright, now I do have this problem that I can't get rid of this card right now. So that's kind of annoying. But it's more or less fine. I, I could have done this a lot differently. One, two, three, four for an Avengers Mansion. Draws me one card. I could have used Agamon to play that. Alright. We're just going to thwart. We're going to spend a turn thwarting. He's not tough on his next stage, is he? He's just going to give me another spell. He has 23 hit points. Alright. Side card. That's the assault boost that I didn't get. Okay. You know what? I'm going to go Alter Ego so I can kill this card. Because I kind of need to. One threat. He schemes. These each go down by one. Three threat. And I get an encounter card. And he hits him again. Uh, so pacification exhausts all of my upgrades. So upgrade, 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 upgrade. It's funny, I had one turn where I could do a purple. And then that goes away. I'm not in here for him. Alright, do another protective ward in here. We're going to put that protective board in my deck so that I can cancel if he gets a treachery next turn. Alright, we're going to flip um, flip over the top card. That's what I was hoping for. Some Crimson Bands. Alright, we're going to go Hero Form. Oh, I didn't draw my card. Hmm. Alright, he has four health, which is not really that easy of a damage amount for me. I'll draw a card. One, two, three for a med team. Honestly, what I'm thinking of doing is just taking a turn to kind of build up a bit. Uh, what I really like is my Masters of the Mystic Arts. Okay, only one of those is in my disc. No, they're both in my discard pile. So it's going to be hard for me to Crimson Bands him too well at the moment. Magic Blast would not be bad. And I can do a damage this turn. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and do that. We're going to play Resourceful and Resourceful. And I'm going to... Oh, shoot. I'm going to Thwart too. <laughs> Forgot I need to do that. All right. I get an extra encounter card again. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, not my favorite set of cards, but it'll do. One threat, he attacks me. First thing that happens is fireball goes off and things my up. I have no way to get bonus defense, so Mockingbird's gonna block this and take four damage. Alright, I took no damage, so I get surged, which attaches to me. I cannot ready until I spend an energy and a fist, okay? And then I get another spell. I get the little spell. Which confuses me. Alright. Fun times. Mm. 
All right, uh, I need to spend energy and fist. So this can be an energy, and that can be a fist, and that kills this. All right, uh, because I would kind of like to spend one. I should have just awarded one of those. Darn it. Some days I'm just not paying close enough attention. All right, we get clear. We get magical enhancements. That lets me four for three. Ready. Punch him for two. And then clear. Can punch him for one. One, two, three, four, five, six, and I have a desperate defense and a warning in my hand, so I should be pretty well set. Okay, one threat. He attacks me. That goes off. I'm gonna defend this. I'm going to defend it. Spend magical enhancements to make it a desperate defense. So I'm defending for four. Hit me for two. That doesn't hurt me. I ready. I can unflappable to draw a card. He takes one damage. He is defeated. When, uh, when revealed, each player discard cards until they discard a spell. That's not a spell. I'm sure there's a spell in here somewhere. I haven't seen them all, I don't think. Hey, look! It's another fireball. Alright, uh, and he has 23 hit points. Alright. I get a single encounter card. It's manipulation again. Which gives me another encounter card. Which is Rubble Storm. Which gives me another encounter card. Which is Abjuration. Runs two or more damage from a single attack, but I can't do all damage. <sighs> oh, I had five defense. Seriously? Man. Who do we hate? The answer is Ebony Ma. All right. This is dumb. One, two, three. We're going to Magic Blast Ebony Ma. We deal five damage and discard the top card of our deck. It has a fist resource, so we stun him. You're stunned, and you no longer have Abjuration. Because you prevented five damage from a single attack. You jerk. Alright, we're just going to deal a couple damage to him. I'm going to use Med Team to heal Clea, and she'll deal the damage to him also. We're going to discard Warning. We will hang on to Warning. Nah, we'll discard Warning, because I'm probably not going to take any damage. All right. Five more cards. Hey, it's a Master's Mystic Arts, finally. <laughs> One threat. He is stunned, so he does not attack me. Get one encounter card. It's a Hydra Patrol. Which has two threat, but I don't have to worry about that. Okay, time for you to die. I draw a card. I spend one to master the Mystic Arts with a double resource and hit him for seven. And a stun status. I exhaust and spend two fists to hit him for seven damage. I spend one, two, 
three. Did him with a magic blast for five and another stun. Because I discarded a fist, of course. Cloak of Levit Levitation stands me up, and I punch him for one, and he is defeated. Yay! We defeated Ebony Maw. So, there we go. Um, yeah, I mean, still, so many statuses, um, obviously, in high control. You know, I mean, I don't know what to say. Still S tier, but I don't feel like he's as one trick with this, is really what it comes down to. His invocations are still great. Um, they're wonderful cards, and you love to see them. And you're often going to discard a card to get one turn face up, but you're often not going to cast it immediately. Um, because there's value in holding it for a turn, and well, it's just kind of expensive. I mean, even the card draw, I think I, I discarded to reveal that, and then I cast it for a resource, and then I drew three cards. So I gained a resource out of doing that and exhausted. So, you know, was that a worthwhile trade when I did it? I mean, I think it was because I kind of needed cards and I had garbage hand, but it's not automatic um, that, you know, spending your exhaust to get a single card is going to be worth it. Uh, yeah. But anyways, and then, you know, I had to discard a card to get another invocation, which was the swap of status, and I didn't even need that. Um, so... That's the that's the idea of this strange tweak. Um, I don't know. Like I said, I don't. It doesn't take him out of S tier, really. I don't think. Um, certainly not against someone like Ebony Maw, who's so status vulnerable. Uh, but it does feel to me like it takes him down to closer to Scarlet Witch Venom territory, and less often his own personal strange tier. Um, but I don't know. Let me know your thoughts. I'm happy always to read them, and um, next time we will tackle Hulk, and we'll try to bring him a little bit up. I'm still, I'm not expecting him to reach, you know, strange tier, although I have mods for Hulk that might be in that range. I have a lot more ideas for different ways to alter Hulk. I think he needs a more significant rework than Strange does. Um, strange is, you know, he's good, and, and he's just a little too good. There's not much you can do bring him down. That's what I'm trying to do. Just bring him down to a par. Um, I did get to end the game with 10 hit points, but you know, I defeated that scheme that yielded me for four, right? So, yeah. Anyways, fun times. And um, like and subscribe if you like these things, and you can see my next videos, and I will see you next time.